All right, guys, welcome to a new video on the channel. Today, I'm going to show you my updated version of my Dark World deck. Um, I've tried it a couple of times uh, on 9 and also IRL, and uh, I, I, started, I just thought it needed more gas, and this is exactly what I'm yeah, trying to present here. So the main deck is clean 40 cards. Um, I'm going to show the ratios uh, when, we, when we show the deck. And then the side deck is 15 cards, obviously the extra deck also 15 cards. Uh, nothing much to be said here. You can already see a little spice here, like for example the Lava Golem and stuff like that. But uh, we'll come to that later. Um, so the side deck and the extra deck, we'll look at that later. Uh, first of all, um, the deck, I, I, bo I bought the Garafa with the red font, I think it's just wonderful. Anyways, we play two Garafa. Um, in my opinion, you still don't need more. Uh, and the same is also for Rain Oaks. I feel like they brick too much, and uh, they fulfill their purpose. Um, each 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 of these has a specific purpose, and they fulfill that purpose. Um, so you don't need too much of them because they can brick. Uh, so you just gotta be careful with the amount of dark world cards you play. Um, silver, I played two of silver because I feel like if one silver is gone, then your entire like your entire strategy begins to crumble. Um, because Silva is like your play card in order to like um, get going with the link climbing and stuff like that, and which which I'm gonna showcase later um, when we when we look at the extra deck. What I mean by that, um, Snow is the best card of this deck, arguably, uh, because it serves you everything you want. Uh, so I play her three times. Also, you can normal summon it, and it's level four, and it all doesn't have that um, uh, that lower ATK. It's a thousand seven hundred. That's good. Um, to round it off, I play uh, three Genta and one Cerulee. And these are all the Dark World cards. Uh, as you can see, it's not much. Um, it's uh, three, six, and then uh, nine, twelve, thirteen. It's not actually that much, um, but it's perfect. Like it, it, it does everything that it needs to do. Um, and yeah, obviously you could play more Cerulee, you could play more, um, you could also play like different names, so for example you can play like Lucent, uh, which is also really nice, you can play um, Gold going second for example, if you can't hand loop anymore, but um, I have, I have I've felt that Silva is always wonderful to have. Um, you pair Dark Woods with Dangerous, so I play a pretty, pretty big Danger package, uh, at least everything that I could fit. Um, so I play one Bigfoot for board break, uh, but also because he's level 8, so that's really nice too. Um, three Nessie, three Mossman. Mossman is your most valuable tool in order to get the discard that you want. Uh, so playing him is very essential at 3. Um, I play two Chupacabra over something like Thunderbird because I value the the Reborn from Chupacabra, uh, Chupacabra and also he's a level 4. Uh, you'll see why level 4 makes a lot of sense here. Uh, and to round it off, uh, the two one off, one Tsuchinoko and one uh, Jackalope. Uh, these are still mandatory because they are like the best dangers overall, but Mossman is the best for your strategy. Um, so as you can see, 3, 6, uh, 9, 10, 11 dangerous. So um, could be more, could be less, but I'm really like happy about that ratio. Um, and yeah, with the Chupacabra, you sometimes gotta be careful because that's the only danger that sometimes doesn't have a target. Um, and so it kind of sometimes gets useless in your hand uh, when when it's like the only two cards in your hand is one super cover and something else then it kind of feels bad to play it but that's totally fine like it uh, usually you don't come to that scenario uh, I play two tech cards uh, one is the uh, Shavara that you already saw in the recent um, I made in April and Tiferos the Elite um, Tiferos is absolutely crucial in order to like keep going forward, uh, and he's one of your best discards. Also, he's level four, uh, which means you can normal summon him too, basically, if you need to. Uh, it doesn't come up as often, but uh, when it comes up, it feels really nice. Um, then I don't play traps here, by the way. This is uh, pure. The rest is like dark world cards and pure gas. So coming to the dark world cards first, it's uh, triple gates. Um, I see some deck profiles out there with two gates, which I cannot really comprehend and understand. Um, I play Sephiroth to have a fourth gate, 
right? Because you can activate gate, and then if it's like on the field, you can't activate again this turn, but it's dissolved once per turn. So if you activate like another gate, uh, it works. So what you do with Tefuros is you get your back, your gate back on your hand, and then you activate it again. So you have a force gate that way. Um, helps me extremely much uh, breaking boards and also building my board. So I'm not really sure why you should play less than three um, field spells. I've even like thought about going terraforming in this deck. Uh, that's how much I love this field spell and uh, how much I want to have it. Um, one session, I don't really understand why you would play multiple of that. Uh, you have snow to search. Right, same goes for archives and corridor. Uh, corridor you cannot um, search, but that's uh, that's what we got these cards for, and also the dangers for draw. So um, like this draws you, this draws you, all the dangers draw you. So it, it, it's not really an issue to get to the, or like to get to the corridor, and uh, yeah, so that's not really an issue. Uh, but this is all for the for the dark void card. But I feel like these are like, you know. These are like mandatory. Uh, you could always increase the, the amount of um, the amount of, uh, for example, um, dark corridors. For example, you play. You could also play multiple fusion spells, etc. I just don't like it. That's not my build. Um, this is my build, and, and it works the best for me. Uh, I play one of talent. Uh, the reason why I play only one of talent is because I'm drawing so much in this deck. So seeing multiple stuff, like multiple one of that I, or like not multiple one-off, but multiple copies of a card that I can only activate once per turn. Uh, for example, like uh, Dark Corridor, you can only activate one Dark Corridor per turn. Uh, same goes for Talent. So it kind of feels at drawing this card multiple times. Uh, so I just thought to myself, okay, I'm just, fuck it, I'm just gonna play one, you know. Um, you'll understand why in a second. Uh, let me actually just keep it here. Uh, I play one card detection. Um, Card is mandatory as fuck in the, in the dark world deck. It's completely busted. Uh, obviously, can it can like give your opponent like access to the graveyard by him throwing the old, the whole hand away, and uh, he can also like draw into hand traps if he didn't have any before. But usually, you try to not care about that because your advantage usually should be more than your enemy is. Um, and yeah, then I play three upstart goblins. So we have a 37 card deck, a 30 yeah 37, and three allure of darkness uh, for more gas. So this is like entirely. Mostly for the draws. This going second is also to, to take, uh, which sometimes is really nice. And also sometimes if your board is already broken enough, and you just draw into a talent, and your opponent has thrown an ash blossom and imperm, for example, at you, you can just look at his hand and uh, you know rip uh, something off his hand that he may need for a follow up. Um, so yeah, this is like, as you can see, it's all gas, no breaks. Um, extremely fun to play. And uh, you may you may ask now why you do you need that many draw cards because uh, the fuck are we playing in our extra deck that makes us uh, need that many draws? Um, so first of all, I play two fusion. I will show you in a second why. Um, and one zombie stein. Again, I'll show you why in a second. Um, and yeah, then I play one Baguska and one Dugaris. The only reason I play Baguska is essentially if you get hand trapped to death. And you can't really play, you can still try to make a Baguska and uh, hope that your opponent, you know, has to stall for two turns and then you draw into a couple cards that may help you. Um, so yeah, and Dugar is just for free draw. Um, yeah, and the rest is Link Monster, so this is all the Exceed Monster and Fusion Monster. I try to kept it, like, I try to uh, ask myself what is, like, more useful. And the thing about Exceed Monsters is you need always multiple monsters of the same level. And chances of that happening are like sometimes not possible with all the hand traps that are being played in the meta right now. So I've resolved to links. Um, and the first one being Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. Extremely busted card. Except that the ATK can only go to 3300, which is not that crazy. But everything else about this card is insanely, insanely broken. Um... Apolusa, one part of our end board. Um, then we have a Nightmare Unicorn. Uh, the only reason we go Nightmare Unicorn is essentially if we go second and we try to break that board and we already have used the effect of Lidenite, um, and we just need more to break the board. That's why uh, Unicorn is there. Um, and yeah, then I uh, you saw me playing the um, Shavara in the main deck. So I'm obviously playing an Unchained package of Yama, Anguish, and uh, Rage. Anguish solely for the board break, um, and Yama to get to Rage and Rage to 
it's, it's, it's a really valuable tool going first. Um, like I've seen people scooping against me with just a blue sand rage on my board, and they say, like, I wanna, I wanna do more, but they just scoop, and uh, it's obviously understandable. Um, I play one dark, the dark charmer. Um, in the current format, there's not that many people that play like dark only text, but a lot of link monsters, for example, IP Mascarina, are dark. So if you see some, like, usually a lot of people go IP Mascarina. And so having that dark access and, and summoning the, the IP is sometimes really, really valuable to make like an, uh, a, a, like just a two mat upper, which is more than enough. Um, yeah, one mod cracker, best card in deck basically, um, enables you so much and uh, IP SP. Um, IP to end on and SP to break boards, uh, essentially. That's uh, how it usually works. And yeah, I'm extremely happy with this uh, extra deck as it has never failed me. Um, and you may ask now, why do you have like these specific cards in the extra deck? I'll show you in a second why, and why we need that much gas. Because as you can see, um, uh, let me show you really quick what we try to end uh, end up on, uh, and then the rage somewhere here, and an IP Muscarina. So this is like part of our end board. Uh, and usually, in most cases, it's either backed up by a Silver Rain Beox or Grafa, uh, like that that is being put here. This is uh, our like end board if we go uninterrupted, and even if we, if we go and if even if we get interrupted, but if we have enough gas, we get to this end board. And you may ask now, why the fuck do you play Tommy Stein? Why the fuck do you play this and that and that? Um, reason being that that's one card that fucks this uh, deck a lot. And that is um, uh, Dark Ruler no more, as you can see. Like one Dark Ruler with that. And the reason uh, why you play a session, um, like Dark Ruler and Droplet, like that's, those are like the two cards that fuck the deck entirely, uh, but also like other cards. Um, so what you do uh, when they want to negate your monster effects um, with stuff that you cannot respond with, for example, Dark Ruler no more, uh, if they Dark Ruler this board, you're essentially fucked, right? Um, so what you do is, uh, you cannot activate with monster effect uh, to Dark Ruler, so you cannot chain the Grafa. Uh, but what you can do is, you can activate a session as Chain Link 2 um, to make a new fusion. That's why I play two fusions. Um, and then you chain Link 3 Zombie Stein uh, and throw away a card, put him in defense mode. And then you target the card that um, is trying to nullify your entire board. And then, yeah. That's like uh, the reason why you do that, and then uh, all the shit resolves, and you can use um, the the zombie stein even for the fusion if you want to, uh, but you can also keep it on the board and use them for the IP to the SP or something like that. Um, so yeah, this has worked out pretty insane. In like whenever I did that, enemy were like, "What the fuck?" Like I had the perfect out to that, and you're just dodging it, you know, uh, just because a set a session, uh, and then the zombie stein doing God's work because he's like. Basically, an Omni Negate for phase up cards, uh, and yeah, that's like the end. Board, that's like how the end board usually looks like, um, and uh, why there's stuff like Zombie Stein or Double Grafa in it. Because if I'm being honest with you guys, you don't really need two Grafa here. Like, you're trying to do an FTK, uh, like going first to take the FTK, because no one can play through that board essentially. Um, so yeah, it's like. You, you you have like this crazy board and the opponent just like okay what the fuck am I going on the post to do again that and then they just scoop and going second you actually have a lot of problems going second especially into like um, all the crazy boards like voices voice fire king stuff like that so this side deck that you can see here is literally entirely for going second because going first we have enough gas obviously if we play against shifter or draw we are just dead it we just accept the reality. Uh, this is sadly a rogue deck. It's not a tier one deck. It's not a tier zero deck. It's a rogue deck. It's a, it's a rogue strategy. So obviously it dies to some stuff a lot, uh, and some stuff hurts it a lot, like shift and draw. And obviously we could try to play like something in the deck against those cards, like called by the grave and stuff like that. But I'm just not the fan of those ratios and of those bricks that these cards sometimes are like quirky my regardian stuff like that it's fine but it doesn't do shit against shifter the only thing you can do against shifter is essentially caught by and if you don't have the caught by then you just dead and um putting a card into that deck just for that 
is not enough for me. So I'm trying to ignore these cards that fuck these decks, uh, or this deck in particular, like Droll and Shifter. And I just um, try to build my FTK that way. And the side deck is entirely for going second. Um, so let's get to the side deck really quick. I play three Lava Golem. Uh, there's actually two reasons for that. First of all, it's obviously to break the board. And second of all, he's a fiend, as you can see. Uh, it's German, it says Underwettler, but it's a fiend in uh, English. Um, so it's really nice. Um, banish of gates. That's really nice. And uh, you can also, I mean, you can discard it, but doesn't really do much. Uh, but yeah, so three Lava Golem for board break. Uh, insanely powerful card. You always get, like, you always can attack over it. And you may add now, okay, but the, the normal phase isn't, uh, the normal summon isn't that important? It fucking isn't. Like, you can play without normal summon with the deck. Looks crazy. Um, I play two Pankrata. People don't like this card at all, but I just really think it's really strong. Um, the, the thing about Fenrir, I tried Fenrir in this deck, by the way. Uh, the problem about Fenrir is that he sometimes, like, Sometimes I want to destroy a back row that the enemy has set and it's not phase up. And also sometimes the enemy just doesn't activate a monster effect. And sometimes he used that monster effect to get rid of Fenrir. So I am not really like inclined to, break, to play Fenrir. And also um, this guy is 2680k so that's a pretty good threat. Um, and so yeah that's why I play it. Um, and you can also chain this in a, in a quick effect. For example if the enemy plays up loser and you... You just summon this guy, it has no, um, like you don't have to activate it, uh, you can just summon it. And then if the enemy activates up loser to something else you do, you can just chain Pankrotop, destroy the Apu, uh, if they didn't make it with IP. But yeah. Um, next up we have three times Fantastical Dragon Phantasmai, uh, purely against Link decks and trying to fix your hand. Uh, because what's a, what's a good hand, you can also play going second, doesn't matter. Uh, and uh, Phantasmai gets you to this hand. Um, yeah, you try, you try to obviously make it when the enemy has like one or two links on the field. Uh, two is already, like, is enough. Um, uh, one, one is already enough. Like, you draw two cards and you have a body on the field. That is crazy. Uh, because you get to fix your hand. Like, you, you draw three Nessies and the rest is good. Okay, discard like two Nessies into the deck. And, uh, stuff like that. So it's really nice. Um, for board break, I have, um, two Lightning Storm and one Feather Duster together with one Talent. Um, uh, tactics one 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 thrust. I mean, um, the reason why I play this kind of package is because lightning storm is also good for like against monsters and stuff like that. Um, and sometimes you try to activate a danger, and the enemy negates that. The danger stays in your hand, uh, or get destroyed, depends on what uh, he activated. And then you can just thrust, uh, for lightning storm and stuff like that. So that's really nice. Uh, and Feather Duster against back row decks. I don't really have a lot against back row, uh, except Lightning Storm and Feather Duster, though, that just gotta suffice. Um, and yeah, the rest is just three Evenly. Um, evenly is a card that I personally don't like that much, uh, because if you draw into, like, drawing into a Feather Duster or into a Pankratop or Lava Golem is always gonna be good in a grind game, but drawing into an Evenly kinda sucks because you can't, can't activate it only when you control nothing. Um, but I have grown attached to this card ever since I played Dark Void, uh, because it really fixes these issues you need against some of these decks, uh, because it banishes them face down, and then you can like play in the main phase to establish your board and they can't get back into the game. It's really nice. Um, but yeah, it, it still sucks drawing in the grind game, uh, but yeah, that usually does not happen with this deck. Like, um, a lot of these games that I have with this deck are literally over in like five minutes because I am trying to establish my board. They scoop, um, they do like a crazy board. I try to play into it. I either have enough gas and they just scoop or OTK, um, or I don't have enough gas. It's pretty simple, um, and there are not really other scenarios happening. But yeah, this is the entire deck. Um, obviously, you could play different stuff, but I'm really happy with um, with this deck right now. Um, like you, you just have so much gas. Like I think you guys just don't understand how much, just just how much gas you have. Um, like uh, it's crazy. I could try to make a test hand, but uh, the video is already that long, and I kind of want to talk in depth about this deck because I feel like uh, a quick deck list isn't really gonna do it uh, because I really like this deck and showing off some combos and stuff like that. But that would be too much for this one video. 
Um, if you want to see like test tents and stuff like that, I could set that up. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching and have a great day. Thank you.